Hello and welcome to City News Daily here on City TV. My name is Zoe Abubedu. Coming up in today's bulletin, a former CEO of Cocoa Board, Dr. Stephen Opuni, charged with causing financial loss to the state. And Ghana Immigration Service justifies the deportation of Indian businessman Ashok Sivra. Meanwhile, his employees threaten to demonstrate over the deportation. The details of the stories now. The immediate past chief executive officer of Cocoa Board, Dr. Stephen Kwabna Opuni, has been charged with causing financial loss to the state. He has been charged alongside Seidu Agongo and Agricult Ghana Limited. In a writ cited by City News Daily, the state preferred a total of 27 charges against the accused. The case is set to be called on Friday, March 23rd at the High Court. In February 2017, the Economic and Organized Crimes Office, IOKO, froze the assets of Dr. Opuni as part of investigations into his time as CEO of Cocoa Board. Dr. Opuni was alleged to have mismanaged the cocoa sector during his tenure and was relieved of his post on January 12 last year as a result. The Ghana Immigration Service has justified its decision to deport embattled Indian businessman Ashok Sivaram. This is the second time the Indian man has been extradited after losing a legal tussle with the Immigration Service. Speaking to City News Daily, the Public Affairs Director of the Ghana Immigration Service, Superintendent Michael Amwakwata, explained that Mr. Sivaram was deported because he failed to renew his residence and work permits. On the 11th of March, Mr. Ashok Sivaram was duly removed from the country based on the fact that his work resident permit has expired. Since 15 December 2017, he has not applied for renewal. And by our laws, anyone who has overstayed his permit is an illegal immigrant. In a related development, employees of Jaimai Communications Limited, a company owned by the deported Indian businessman Ashok Sivaram, have threatened to embark on a demonstration following the deportation of their boss. The spokesperson for the employees, Richard Ankara, spoke to City News Daily. By Friday, we are going to go on rampant. We are waiting for the permission of the police and then do a peaceful demonstration to plead with the government that he should kindly grant him the visa and then the resident permit as well. Because the first time he was taken out, our salaries was paid on 20th of the following month because he was the only signatory. And this time along, he is the only signatory too. We have to send a blank check through EMS to him for him to sign for us. We are about 294 staff. The minority in Parliament has chided the Minister of Defence, Dominic Nitiwo, for defending the soldiers who bent down some trucks in the northern region as punishment for alleged recalcitrant illegal miners. But speaking to City News Daily, the Member of Parliament for Kumbungu, Ras Mubarak, disagreed with the Defence Minister, saying the affected persons could not have acted illegally can't say that they were acting illegally. And we saw the challenge and invited Parliament to take it upon itself if the various committees that oversee water bodies constantly go and verify and to see whether indeed people were in any way violating or destroying our water bodies. Still in Parliament, the MP for Mansung Edubia in the Ashanti region, Yao Frimpong, has rebuked the first Deputy Speaker of Parliament for suggesting a shoot-to-kill approach in handling illegal miners in the country. The first Deputy Speaker, Joe Sewusu, yesterday suggested the drastic approach, but Mr. Frimpong, whose constituency is one of the worst affected by the activities of illegal miners, is of the view that the shoot-to-kill approach will rather create human rights issues. 
don't believe in some of these drastic measures because of historical facts that innocent people get killed because of such policy. He has a point, but I felt he went beyond certain limits. As a lawmaker, I know him very well that we, we go by due process. If somebody offends the law, you have to arrest that person. There's no way you can go fire him here and there and you think that he will succeed. Now, the Takwa Police Divisional Command says the eight workers of Goldfields Ghana Limited who were arrested during Monday's demonstration will be charged with unlawful demonstration. The workers were protesting against management's decision to opt for contract mining, a move expected to result in huge retrenchments. Speaking to City News Daily, the Divisional Commander for Takwa, ACP Edmond Ohinebusumpim, said the police has begun investigations into the matter and the suspects will soon be arraigned. And that's how we wrap up today's edition of City News Daily on City TV. My name is Zoe Abubedu. For more news, do log on to cityfmonline.com. Many thanks for your company. Second image international admissions in progress. Courses available include hairdressing, beauty therapy and fashion. Call us 1243-331-999. Evening and weekend classes are also available.